Hey there, YouTube bassists. This is John from johnfoxbass.com, premium bass guitars. Coming to you today with a demo of the new Bergantino Super Pre pedal mounted or portable, highly portable, bass guitar preamp. It is so cool. This is the Super Pre right here. And what I'm going to do, this is going to be a bit of a long video, um, kind of broken up into two parts. So the first part, I'm going to just uh, play a P bass and run through um, a bunch of different presets that I programmed in here and kind of walk you through the features a little bit. And then uh, I'm going to switch basses and try out a bunch of different uh, types of bass guitars. I got a Stingray and uh, a Schold Gen 5 string and a Sadowski uh, modern jazz bass and a Federa and a Fender type uh, jazz bass and a Dingwall and a P-Bass with flats. Uh, this one has round wounds. So um, we're going to just listen to a few different instruments and, and hear some of the um, types of tones that this uh, is capable of producing. So um, it, as you can see, it has an OLED display. And we'll just, we'll just step through some of the features here. Um, so uh, there are four knobs. Those are the tone controls, bass, low mid, high mid, and treble. Um, those knobs can also be pressed to access one of the memories. Um, you can also press these foot switches with your foot if you're um, using this on a pedal board um, to access the memories as well. And if you hold both buttons or press both buttons, um, it changes banks. So there are seven banks, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and each bank has got three memories plus the main scene. So um, kind of four settings, but um, three in memory. And memory one, two, and three. So let's say I, I go to a, a bank that has no settings right now. Bank, um, bank E has got no settings. So you can see if I tap the memory, nothing happens because um, there's nothing in there. So we can dial in a tone, whatever we want. I'll just set it, uh, let's say, everything on flat. How about that? So we'll set it all on zero, 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 zero. And we can run through the um, high pass filter. There's a high pass filter and a low pass filter. The high pass filter by default is set at 40 hertz. You can go all the way down to 32 or even turn it off, or all the way up as high as 98. Um, the manual recommends um, 40 hertz at least, maybe even a little higher, depending on when your bass and the room and your speakers and so forth, because those lower frequencies just suck a lot of power. That's the whole point. Uh, it kind of wastes your, your power, so you lose uh, overhead in the amp if, you, if you're wasting a lot of power on the real low frequencies that don't get reproduced well anyway. So that's the purpose of the high-pass filter. The low-pass filter is kind of like a ultra-high tone control. It kind of cuts back. The, the highs, you can off or all the way up to 10 kilohertz, or you can dial it all the way back down to, I think, around 2 kilohertz. Um, or maybe even less. I, I forget. I don't really use that. Oh, wow. All the way down to 500 hertz, actually. So you can get a, a very, very dark tone with that um, by cutting the highs of everything above 500 hertz. Um, and then there's a, a variable feedback filter, which is really awesome for uh, upright bass players um, or any uh, acoustic bass, acoustic electric. If you've got a bass that's feeding back, um, you can find whatever note it is that's feeding back and um, notch it. Um, you can null it out by as much as 12 decibels, 12 dB. So, for example, uh, let's say... Um, this, uh, this D was feeding back. So I can cut it all the way back, um, you know, up to, to 12 dB so that it won't hopefully um, feed back anymore. Um, and let's see, we've got a uh, compressor. Um, and the compressor, you can uh, choose the mode either series or parallel. So if it's in series, then the whole signal just goes through the compressor. 
And if it's parallel, then the signal splits. Half the signal goes through the compressor and half doesn't. Um, so that way um, you can kind of tame your highs, but still not, um, not lose high meaning volume, not frequency, and still not um, you know, lose the, the punchiness. Um, the compression, you can vary it from, uh, from 1 to 15. And, um, and then there's also gain on the compression channels as well, so you can boost or cut uh, in order to level match, basically. You want, to, you want to achieve unity gain, really, with all your settings on here. Um, and then it's got some effects, which we're going to run through. Um, fuzz, overdrive, and distortion. And those, you can vary, of course, the amount of drive and the output level. Um, and what's amazing is that you can also vary um, the frequency. The, it's a bandpass filter uh, of where the effect is operating. You can set the low end as well as the high end. So the low end is the uh, crossover frequency, and you can go all the way down as low as 100 hertz or all the way up to 1 kilohertz or 1,000 hertz um, for the low end. And then for the high end, there's a low-pass filter. It goes from 1,000 hertz or 1 kilohertz up to 3 kilohertz. Uh, and then there's a blend as well. So how much um, drive do you want to blend in with your clean? You can go anywhere from 0 to 100. So 0 is just pure clean. 100 is pure drive with no clean. And um, in addition um, to the setting the levels on the bass, low mid, high mid, treble, you can also um, vary the center frequency uh, of each of those knobs. And you can also uh, vary the Q. So the Q is like the bandwidth of the, of the control. Um, is it wide or medium or very narrow, very sort of notchy? Um, so you can really, really dial in and shape your tone exactly the way you want to. You can vary this, the center frequency of those, uh, all four of the controls, as well as um, the Q. And uh, when you hit the mute button, you've got a tuner uh, activated. And let's see what else. You've got two DIs on the back, um, pre, a pre-DI uh, and a post. So pre is just taking the bass right out through the XLR, the raw bass tone. And the post is uh, the EQ'd, you know, post-processing signal going out. Um, you've also got... Um, a little mini, uh, you know, eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter jack where you can plug your phone in or a beat box or something like that. So, like that. That's that's actually a beat buddy plugged in uh, to the Super Pre. Um, and there's a USB port for loading uh, profiles and headphone out and an effects loop. So those are the major uh, features. And we're going to just uh, run through playing a couple of tones. I'm going to go back to bank A. So this uh, cycles through the banks up from A through G. And this, if you press these two, it cycles down backwards. And it loops around, goes from G back to A if you keep going up. So D, E, F, G, A again. There we go. So I have everything um, flat right now. And then what I'm going to do, you'll see me access the memories and um, we'll just cycle through a couple of different tones and you'll hear how, how radically different they are. Um, and I've got the P-Bass um, volume up to max, volume and tone both, all the way up. And we'll just EQ it with the Super Pre. Um, you can also um, set the levels of, of uh, your presets. So if you've got different basses that have different um, output uh, levels, you can use different uh, presets to accommodate those instruments to make them all so that they're equal uh, on the way out. So here we have it. Uh, that's the end of the kind of the, the quick walkthrough. Um, and these are available at johnfoxbase.com. Um, and you can get it either with or without a power supply. Uh, make sure you subscribe, by the way, if you're not already, and find out about new gear as it shows up at uh, John Fox Bass. Thank you for watching. And now we're going to just listen to, uh, try and try not do any more talking, just listen to uh, a few different basses 
to hear um, how they sound through this thing. And the uh, output of the DI is going into a HK Multimedia iRig Quattro Pro and then straight into the camera, the Sony camera. I just wanted to mention one other thing. So that was bank A. Now I've gone over to um, bank, yeah, bank B. So bank B is um, all overdrive settings. And then bank C will be uh, distortion settings and bank D will be fuzz settings. So we'll go through three, three of each, three with overdrive, then three with distortion, and then, then three with, with fuzz. So you'll be able to hear the difference on those, the different drive circuits. Okay, so there I've got the, uh, the fuzz blended in at 55%. And now here's 100.
I went to 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. All right, so that's a P-Base. And um, that's the end of the sort of uh, demo of the pedal itself. And I'm gonna uh, plug in a Stingray at this point. If, you're, uh, if you just wanted to hear the settings of the pedal, you could stop now, or if you wanna hear it with different bases, you can keep listening. We're gonna go back to bank A and listen to a few of the clean tones. So bank A had no um, drive circuit engaged at all, just uh, clean. That's the uh, Stingray. Now we got a traditional Fender-ish jazz bass here from Bluesman Vintage. And you can hear how incredibly valuable it is to have the ability to blend in, you know, the clean with the uh, drive circuit. This is a, a P base with flats. We'll go back to bank A again here.
great bass this is huh I love that one now look out here is one that you have not seen here at John Fox base yet because it just arrived Dingwall afterburner one five string
That base is killer. It's also about eight pounds. Here is a brand spanking new Schuld Gen 5 that just got here yesterday. And it's got a 33 inch scale. Pete knocked it out of the park with that bass, that's for darn sure. Here's a nice old uh, Sadowski, well, 10 years old maybe, Sadowski Modern 4, uh, 24 fret jazz bass.
Closing in on the end of it, I think I got one or two more bases to try out. Maybe we'll save the best for last. Save the very best for last. <laughs> Here's a, uh, a hollow body, uh, an acoustic bass with a uh, piezo. Is pretty neat. Super lightweight too. It weighs like nothing. About six and a half pounds. All right, here we go. Got a almost double that. Uh, almost 11 pounds. Federa Matt Garrison standard five string with a walnut body. Thank <laughs> you. 
I could noodle on this thing all night, and that's probably what I'm about to do. So, uh, if you're still awake, <laughs> thanks for watching. That's an extended demo of the Super Pre with lots of different bases. Um, got about 50 more here, maybe 60 more. Uh, not all of them are listed on the website, but many of them are, at least a few. Um, so. Check out the website, johnfoxbase.com, and let me know if there's something that you're looking for specifically that you don't have. I might have it here. Um, and what I do have is this Super Pre, and uh, I'm sure they're gonna go fast, but uh, I can get more very quickly. Don't worry. So I've got four of them here at the moment. Thanks for watching, and uh, take care. This is John from johnfoxbase.com, premium bass guitars.